Our topic for today is Ruben shall not excel. Welcome to today's study. And today we're going to be studying a very important topic regarding a certain condition that affects a large proportion of the world's population. And we're going to learn on how we can combat this condition and live healthy and happy lives. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we want to ask you that you may come and assist us as we go through this important topic with regards to our health. Father, this condition which we're going to be discussing has been a scourge to society. And we are praying, Lord, that as we learn about health principles, we may then be able to combat this condition and also teach and educate others on how they too can fight against this condition. We are asking, Lord, that you may help us to value the rich heritage of the health reform message which you have given us as a movement, that we may be an example unto the world and that we may be ready, a people prepared for the Lord. We want to thank you that you have heard our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. In chapter 49 of Genesis, Jacob is on his deathbed and he has gathered all his sons and his grandchildren to, his, to, the, to, the, to the death chamber. Now, we read in verse 3 of chapter 49 the following. And he's speaking about his eldest son, Reuben. Reuben, who was his heir, or was meant to be his heir. And this is what he has to say about Reuben. He says, Reuben, thou art my firstborn, firstborn, my might and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. Verse 4, unstable as water, thou shalt not excel. So basically what Jacob is saying is that Reuben is my firstborn son. You were meant to be the repository of my inheritance. As the firstborn son, there were privileges that were to accrue to Reuben as the eldest. Number one, he was to be the priest of the family. Number two, he was to be the progenitor of the Messiah. Number three, he was to receive a double portion of his father's earthly goods, his earthly blessings. And this is what Jacob is intimating in the first verse, where he says, Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity and the excellence of power. Reuben, these were meant to be yours. These blessings were meant to be yours. But unstable as water, you shall not excel, you shall not take the first place. So Reuben, because of his iniquity and his instability, he was unable to be the receptor to receive these blessings. And these blessings ended up being passed on to his younger brothers. So Levi became the priest. Judah became the progenitor of the Messiah, and Joseph received a double portion. His two sons became the sons of Jacob. So, what was the problem with Reuben? Reuben was unstable as water. And what is the characteristic of water? Water has the nature that it takes the shape of the container in which it is put into. So if you put water in a cup, it becomes a cup. If you put water in a container, it becomes the shape of whatever container it has been put into. And that was the character of Reuben. When he went to Rome, he became like the Romans. When he went to Joburg, he became like those of Joburg. When he went to Harare, he became like those of Harare. He conformed to the society around him and never stuck true to principle. Paul, speaking about this and knowing that in the last days, those who claim to be God's children are going to have the tendency of conforming to the standards of the world, had this to say in Romans chapter 12, beginning with verse 1. He says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove or give evidence of what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So Paul is saying, don't be conformed to the customs of the world. You are a child of God. You have a rich heritage. You have a pattern of living that is distinct. And if you abide by this pattern, whether you go to America, whether you go to the UK, whether you go to Australia, if you abide by the pattern handed to you by inspiration, you will excel, unlike Reuben. 
This is what the uh, uh, inspiration has to say in the book Christian Temperance and Bible Hygiene, uh, page 154. It says, as a people, with all our profession of health reform, we eat too much. Indulgence of appetite is the greatest cause of physical and mental debility and lies at the foundation of a large share of the feebleness which is apparent everywhere. So what she's saying is that as a people we have a rich heritage, as a people we have received the health reform, but we are not abiding by the health reform and therefore the diseases of Egypt have become prevalent in Israel. So today we want to discuss one of those common conditions that have become prevalent amongst our people. And that condition is the condition of hypertension. Hypertension or high blood pressure is prevalent globally. In fact, about 1.3 billion people between the age of 30 and 79 suffer from hypertension. Of which 46% don't even know that they have hypertension. Those who know they have hypertension and are actually being managed for hypertension, of those of who know and are being managed, only 20% are managing to control it properly. So you'll agree with me that hypertension or high blood pressure is a big problem. So what is high blood pressure? High blood pressure basically means that the pressure within your blood vessels is higher than 140 over 90. That's what it means. And what do we mean by 140 over 90? So when you go to your doctor or your medical practitioner and get your blood pressure measured, there are two readings that you find. There is a reading, an upper reading, and a lower reading. A numerator and a denominator. Now, the numerator, the, the, the number at the top, is what we call the systolic blood pressure. This is the blood pressure generated in your blood vessels when your heart contracts. We call that the systolic blood pressure, and it must be less than 140. Then there is the reading at the bottom, the denominator. This reading is known as the diastolic heart blood pressure. And this diastolic blood pressure is generated in your blood vessels when your heart relaxes between beats. Now, this diastolic blood pressure must always be less than 90 millimeters of mercury in order for us to say that you do not have diastolic high blood pressure. So anyone with a blood pressure of over 140 and 90 has high blood pressure. And we're going to understand uh, very shortly some of its features. Now, the interesting thing about hypertension or high blood pressure is that it doesn't really have any symptoms that you can detect. This is why it's known as the silent killer. It works to damage your blood vessels. It works to damage your organs silently. It is only when the damage has reached a sufficient level that you see an immediate adverse event then you know that, oh no, I had high blood pressure all along. So it is known as the silent killer. But some people, when the blood pressure is elevated, may report experiencing headaches. Some people may experience uh, uh, bleeding from the nose. Some people may experience body aches and pains, shortness of breath, and a host of other symptoms. But all these symptoms are not specific to high blood pressure. So remember, high blood pressure is the silent killer, and it is necessary for you to, to, to have routine medical checkups. You need to go to your doctor regularly to get your blood pressure measured so that you know that you have it or you don't have it. In fact, for those who are above the age of 18 and have no other risk factors for high blood pressure, it is recommended that you get your blood pressure measured once every two years or checked uh, once every two years. For those who are between the ages of 18 and 39 and have a risk factor, they have a risk factor, then you need to be checked once every year, at least once every year. For those who are above the age of 40, you also need to have your BP measured once every year. Now, what are the types of high blood pressure? What are the types? Now, so high blood pressure is generally divided into two types in terms of what causes it. We know of what we call primary hypertension and what is known as secondary hypertension. Now, primary hypertension basically is high blood pressure that has no specific cause. 
In other words, we cannot really tell what the cause is, but there are a number of risk factors that are associated with you developing high blood pressure. So we don't really know the cause, but it is associated with a number of risk factors. Then secondary hypertension is high blood pressure that comes in the wake of you having another medical condition. So examples of medical conditions that can lead to this secondary hypertension are obstructive sleep apnea. We spoke about this in a previous lecture where we said obstructive sleep apnea is whereby when you sleep at night, your throat muscles and your, and, and your neck muscles relax to such an extent that they completely occlude the airways and you stop breathing at night for a period of time and you wake up and you are gasping for air. We call this obstructive sleep apnea and it has been noted that those who suffer from this condition develop secondary hypertension, kidney disease, adrenal gland tumors, thyroid disease, certain drugs cause hypertension like the birth control pill, certain cold remedies, decongestants and even illegal illicit drugs like cocaine have been associated with the development of hypertension. So what are some of the risk factors that can, that can give you an indication or that give a guide on whether or not you are someone at risk of developing high blood pressure? Number one, age. So the older you get, the higher are your chances of developing hypertension. Also, race. It has been noted that hypertension is more prevalent in those of African heritage. Whether they are living in Africa or anywhere in the world, it has been noted that those of this heritage have a preponderance of developing hypertension. Family history. If you have a first degree relative who is suffering from hypertension, whether it's your mom, whether it's a sibling, it is highly likely that you may develop hypertension. Obesity, being overweight. So if you're overweight, a BMI greater than 25, or if you're obese, a BMI greater than 30, your chances of developing high blood pressure increase exponentially. Physical inactivity. So if you're not exercising, if you're not living an active, an active lifestyle, you are more likely to develop hypertension. Smoking. So smoking has been known to harden the blood, the blood vessels. And when they are hardened, they will, they will be less compliant and you're more likely to develop high blood pressure. Taking too much salt. Alcohol, chronic illnesses like diabetes and sleep apnea have been associated with a higher risk of developing hypertension. So, having known the risks, what are some of the complications that may develop with hypertension? Remember we mentioned that hypertension is the silent killer. You don't experience any symptoms, but it can then cause certain symptoms when you develop complications. So what are some of these complications? Number one, you may develop a stroke. So a stroke basically occurs when blood supply to certain parts of your brain has been cut off. And this can occur when your blood vessels have been clogged up with fat and, clo and, and, have clo and clots, and these clots block supply to certain portions of your brain, and you lose function controlled by those areas of the brain. Or you may have a burst artery, what we call a burst aneurysm, right? So you develop these weaknesses in your blood vessels in the brain, and when your blood pressure goes up, these aneurysms or these weaknesses may burst, and you may bleed out in the brain, and we call these hemorrhagic strokes. So these are some of uh, the complications that you find with hypertension. Another complication that may occur with high blood pressure is heart attacks. This is when the heart muscle is not getting enough blood supply and you end up getting a heart attack. The heart muscle then dies and we call that a heart attack. You may get heart failure. So your heart has been pumping blood against resistance for many, many years and your heart begins to lose its capacity to pump blood effectively and we call that heart failure. And people with heart failure tend to have swelling of the legs, shortness of breath, and a host of other problems. Kidney damage is another problem with hypertension, vision impairment, and even dementia. So the question that we need to answer today is, how can we best manage high blood pressure, number one? And how can we prevent ourselves from getting high blood pressure? Now, the key thing you need to remember is that 
Lifestyle is an important tool in your arsenal of managing high blood pressure and preventing yourself from getting high blood pressure. Uh, in fact, this, is, this has been noted by scientists globally that the first port of call in preventing yourself from getting high blood pressure is that you must become a person who is attuned to their lifestyle, who is living a life essentially of health reform. So, Health reform is a key component of managing and preventing high blood pressure. Other things that you'll need to know about, of course, is the use of drug medication. But drugs must be the secondary option. Our primary option, our primary responsibility is that we must look at our lifestyle and adjust the way we live. And we are more, more often than not to, be, to, to find ways and means of managing our hypertension. In fact, if we read the book Councils on Diet and food, we find the following. By taking too much food, we not only improvidentially waste the blessings of God provided for the necessities of nature, but do great injury to the whole system. We defile the temple of God. It is weakened and crippled, and nature cannot do its work wisely and well. And as God has made provision that as God has made provision that it should, because of the selfish indulgence of his appetite, man has oppressed nature's power by compelling it to do work it should never be required to do. So how we eat, how we live has a lot to do with our health. And we're going to learn in a short while what we can do to prevent ourselves from getting high blood pressure and managing high blood pressure. Now, the first thing you need to know about is you need to know about managing your weight. You need to know about managing your weight because it has been found that weight has a very strong correlation with hypertension. And how can you manage your weight? Number one, manage your diet. So a diet that is rich in whole grains, fruits, vegetables, low-fat dairy has been found to be beneficial to those with hypertension. In fact, when you exist or subsist on this kind of a diet, you can actually lower your blood pressure by about 11 millimeters of mercury just by adjusting your diet. Other things in your diet that you need to watch out for, uh, since we're on the subject of diet and weight, are things like your salt intake. It has been found that if you reduce your salt intake to about 1.5 grams per day, you can actually lower your blood pressure by 5 to 6 millimeters of mercury. So when you go shopping in supermarkets and so forth, make sure you read the food labels because you want to make sure that the quantity of salt you're taking is is reduced. Other things that have uh, that you should be aware of is you need to cut down on processed foods. Foods that are processed are generally high in salt. So the less of that you eat, the better you are with regards to your blood pressure. Another thing that you need to know about is that when you eat right, when you're exercising and you lower your weight, you can actually reduce your blood pressure by, by, by a, to a large degree. In fact, it has been noted that for every kilogram of weight that you reduce, you reduce your blood pressure by one millimeter of mercury. So weight management, diet is essential, not, not only preventing yourself from developing hypertension, but it is important in your management of hypertension. Exercise is the next thing you need to incorporate into your health habits in order to manage hypertension. In fact, it has been noted that when you exercise, you strengthen your heart muscle and it is able to pump blood even against that pressure. You also help to manage and lower your weight. So exercise is essential to managing high blood pressure. And what kind of exercise is important? You need to conduct what we call aerobic exercise. This is exercise that increases your heart rate and increases your breathing rate. So things like cycling, brisk walking, swimming, running, jogging, all these things have been found to be beneficial to reducing blood pressure. And you must do these activity, activities for at least 30 minutes for five days minimum of the week and you will receive benefit in terms of hypertension. Other things that you should take note of in managing high blood pressure are your sleep, your sleep hygiene. 
Remember we spoke about this in an earlier lecture that when you sleep you when you sleep well you regulate certain hormones that control appetite. So leptin controls appetite in that when you have more leptin you suppress appetite. Ghrelin is another hormone that is related to appetite. When you have more ghrelin uh, in your in, in your system you then have this sensation of fullness. Right? So it controls your appetite. So the more you sleep, the more your leptin and ghrelin are controlled and the less hungry you feel generally. In addition to this, it has been found that, the, that those who sleep less are more likely to wake up feeling tired, groggy, sluggish, and so on. And their brains interpret this as them having low energy, low sugar. So what do they do? They then go and look for something to eat. And this then leads to obesity. So we are saying that when you manage your sleep cycle, when you sleep regular and good hours, you are more likely to manage your weight and you are more likely to manage hypertension. Other things that you should watch out for are things like alcohol intake. It has been found that those who drink alcohol excessively are more likely to gain weight and if they gain weight, they are more likely to develop hypertension. And the way that alcohol does this is in a number of ways. Number one, alcohol contains calories. And when you go out to drink, you're more likely to have more than two to three glasses of whatever beverage you're, you're, you're drinking. And this means that you're piling up on your calories. And this leads to weight gain. In addition to this, your liver prefers to metabolize alcohol instead of your calories. So you end up having all these calories that are then converted into fat and it all builds up into you gaining weight. So remember, that if you lower your alcohol intake, you are more likely to lower your calorie intake and to also metabolize your calories much better. Those who actually stop drinking alcohol can lower their blood pressure by four millimeters of mercury. Can you see that cumulatively, Health reform measures have a very powerful effect upon your management of high blood pressure. Other things that you need to do is you need to cut down or stop smoking altogether. Because it has been found that smoking hardens your blood vessels and it is a major factor in increasing blood pressure. In addition to its effect on your blood pressure, smoking has been found to also cause or be a factor in the development of many other diseases, including cancers. Now, another thing that you should be aware of is your management of stress. Your management of stress. It has been found that those who are generally stressed most of the time tend to develop hypertension. And this can happen in any number of ways. But one of the ways this happens is that those who are generally stressed tend to, to eat more than usual. We call this binge eating. And this is their way of trying to manage their stress. And when you binge eat, you're more likely to gain uh, uh, weight and you then develop uh, chronic uh, hypertension or hypertension. And also people who are stressed are less likely to be active. They are more likely to, to want to stay indoors, to sleep, to you know to be almost like couch potatoes. And as a result, you don't do enough exercise, you don't have enough physical activity. And this has been shown to be associated with hypertension. So the key home, uh, uh, the key take home message that we're advocating today is this, is that hypertension is a problem throughout the world and it is a major problem. But it is a problem that the Israelites should not have today, the spiritual Israelite, because we have been given a pattern in the mountain. We have been given a pattern by inspiration that if we abide by the pattern of health reform, we would not be affected by all the diseases of the Egyptians. So I'm encouraging you today that if you are suffering from hypertension or if you have any of the risk factors of hypertension, maybe you're obese, you're overweight, you're taking alcohol, you're smoking, the advice today is stop on all these injurious practices. Reduce your weight by exercising. Reduce your weight by being temperate in your health habits. We're asking you to exercise so that you can burn up those calories. We're asking you to sleep well and sleep right.
We are asking you to manage your stress and you will be able to manage this condition and lessen your chances of developing the adverse events or adverse effects or complications of hypertension. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Thank you. Let's close with a word of prayer. Dear Father God, we want to thank you for this lesson that has come to us in, at an opportune time when the world is experiencing a nutrition transition from a plant-based diet to a more westernized, calorie-rich diet. This condition of hypertension affects many of us, not only in the world, but in the church. And we're asking, Lord, that you may turn our gaze to the pattern that you've given us in the mountain. This condition should not be a condition that affects Christians, conscientious Christians, who have taken heed to your message of health reform. We are asking, Lord, that you may give us this earnest desire to abide by the principles you have given us through inspiration. We are asking, Lord, that as we abide by these principles, we may not only benefit in healthier lives, but we may benefit mentally to be able to grasp the truths that are necessary for our time. We want to thank you, Lord, that you have heard our prayer. Be with us as we continue with this week of prayer. In Jesus' mighty name we do pray. Amen.
Some of us, we were sick, but now we are here. The Lord has fully healed us. It seems as if the Lord was silent, but the Lord still speaks to us. What can I say? God is good, and all the time God is good. Whether you're in troubles, whether you're happy, whether you're sad, God is always good because he has allowed it to happen so that we are able to see his greatness. So the Lord has allowed us this year as we are to start this quarter, as we are to start the book of Hebrews. I hope most of you, you are aware and you have read, you have understood, though it is typically and enables us not to understand it more. So this year, looking at the book of Hebrews, the letter to the Hebrews, uh, which was wrote by Paul, I had a question, why did he wrote to the Hebrews? But delving deeper into it, it it was not for a specific people 
or a specific nation, but it was to us all Christians. He was pointing to us all Christians, especially looking at that, that those Christians had faced so many difficulties. Before we delve into our text, which lead us through the lesson, let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, we thank you for the day. We thank you for this ample time you have decided to talk through us as we learn and as we delve deep. May your Holy Spirit lead us into all truth and increase our faith and understanding. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So looking at the text of consideration, which is Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36, I shall read, you need to be patient in order to do the will of God and receive what he promises. This is new King, this is good news which I have read. And you will read the new King James Version, you will read the new King James Version, all the versions are good, but I love this new King James Version because it is challenging us as we are Christian, we need to be patient. We need to do what had God give us to do. So this week, as we are to see the introduction of the book of Hebrews, we will see that it was received by the early Christian church. And also it was a letter from Paul. The authorship of Paul's the book of Hebrews is not quite inclusive, it's not quite given out that Paul is the one who had written the book of Hebrews. But it is one of Pauline epistles to the Greek, Greek manuscripts. And in the earliest context, the manuscript, it is dated in, in AD 200, and it is placed after the epistle of Romans written the, the epistle to the Romans written by Paul and today we find the Hebrew right before the general epistles of the New Testament James first and second Peter and also third John and Jude so looking at the book of Hebrews it is not a usual letter is other letters which Paul wrote, but it is quite a standard protocol. And if we look at it, if you could delve into the book of Hebrews, chapter 1 to 3, if you read it closely, you see it is different for, from all other epistles which Paul had wrote. So, in this lesson's week, we shall look at three three main things. We shall look at the genre of the book of the epistle, its audience, and the last days in which the readers are living. So looking at the genre, you see the type which Paul uses, he did not write it as a letter such that everyone could accommodate everyone, but it was a sermon per se. If we look at a sermon, a sermon it is something which has to do with the teaching, it is something which has to do with giving hope, it is something which has to do to give the assurance. If we look at it as Paul in his work, he most probably gave so many ideas, so many enthusiastic sermons, so many teachings which enables us to look at it and to look as Paul exhausts some of his uh, think, thinking. So, in conclusion, Hebrews was designed at least original as a sermon. Other less elements within the letter gives way to the conclusions are this distinctive use of the first person plural pronoun and the reference to the to hearing and speaking and lastly the alternative between exposition and exhortation the manner in which Paul introduced themes subtly and later on developed to his audience so what am I saying if we look at the book of Hebrews it is full of teachings and it is deep so we need to follow it closely for, or else we might lose everything. So as we look at his audience, Paul did not specifically outline that he's writing to the Jews, he's writing to, 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 to the Hebrews, he's writing to the Christians, but or he 
given to the Gentiles, but all are inclusive. If you go deeper into the book of Hebrews, you see, all who have faith in Abraham are called to be Hebrews, are called to be the new Israel, are called to be spiritual Israel. So Paul was giving out to the spiritual Israel, which we are today. So as he writes to the Christians, everyone who believes in Christ, he gives oh, some things which give us hope and assurance. If he looked the way at this time other Christians were persecuted and also other Christians being persecuted, they lost hope, they lost faith. So Paul was encouraging them that they should raise up the banner, they should keep up the faith, they also should, if they do so, they will have eternal life. So Paul was encouraging, especially us Christians, to exhort, us Christians to uplift, us Christians to increase our faith, so that in the end, when Christ comes, we shall stand. So, if we see in the last days, Paul give us assurance that we have a high priest who is Christ, who is mediating us through his blood in the most holy place. He is mediating us between us and God. He is interceding us before God, before the Father. He is pleading our sins before the Father so that we can stand. In these last days, he began with Christ being a child, being born incarnation in which ah, this is most interesting part uh, angels they don't understand incarnation but us we humans we understand it more and also it ends with he the will of his second coming also when he comes when sin is no more we shall step upon it it should be it will be our foot too also if we look God spoke through Jesus in these last days. And he did not just all do all that, but also their actions, there are also miracles, and also especially his death, his resurrection, and his exaltation. So seeing the book of Hebrews, we see that we have to pay great attention to it. If we understand it, our salvation is near and we won't drift away from it and we keep our eyes looking upon Christ only. And if we look upon Christ, everyone will have his salvation. So looking at the book of Hebrews, looking at the theme verse, it's saying, you need to be patient in order to do the will of God and receive what he had promised. Ladies and gentlemen, if we look unto Jesus, if we are patient, God has promised us eternal life. And that eternal life, it is that we which keep us moving, even in trials, knowing that Lord Jesus is there for us. What am I saying? God loves you. As we delve into this new year, 2022, the Lord will do us good, and the Lord has promised us a lot. And if we read to understand, not to argue, and to compliment one another, in this year, if you unite, as it had happened, and on Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit will pour on us. We will do great things. We will do many wonders. And we will show people who Christ who really is. And we will be the light which shines through the Holy Spirit in this whole world. And the whole world will have hope. We are there to instill hope till Christ came. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. I shall pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, we thank you for this blessed new year. We thank you for everyone for keeping us you have kept us not to be boastful, but you have kept us for the promise and for the new resolutions and for you to be glorified. That's why you have kept us. So, so increase our faith as we delve into the book of Hebrews. Give us understanding and that power to live according to your will. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Oh
Sabbath is a happy day. I love every Sabbath. Sabbath is a happy day, happy day, happy day. Sabbath is a happy day. I love every Sabbath. Happy Sabbath to you all, uh, boys and girls, friends of Jesus. I know you love the Sabbath. Is the day that we rest as we worship God. Some of you would say, I love the Sabbath because mommy always cooks good food. But I love the Sabbath because I will be in the presence of Jesus. And I'm so happy to meet you today. I'm so excited to meet you today. I'm sure you are also excited to meet me uh, this Sabbath as we worship together. Today, we are going to talk about hiding in the rock. What? Hiding in the rock. Say that again with me. Hiding in the rock. So let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you this Sabbath. We thank you uh, for the blessing that you bring upon us on the Sabbath. As boys and girls growing up, uh, learning from your word, may your Holy Spirit remain with us so that your word will make us grow strong bodies, strong minds and uh, strong characters for you. We thank you because we have prayed in the name of our friend and loving Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, boys and girls, for joining me again this Sabbath. Happy Sabbath to you. I told you those in West Africa would say, Sabato Njema. Uh, from our side here would say, Sabata Rakanaka. Or some would say, Isabata Enthe Zitlobo. We thank God because it is the Sabbath. Today we said we are going to be talking about hiding in the rock. But before we talk about hiding in the rock, I want to give you the second type of rock that we talked about. It's called sedimentary rocks. So this rock is formed when layers of different material come together, one on top of each other, one on top of each other, until they begin to compress and compress and compress, and they form this beautiful rock. If you see the rock, it will, it will have many colors, different colors, different colors, because of the different materials that have come together. So the, 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 the materials will come on top of each other, on top of each other, for, for years and years and years and years until they form uh, this uh, type of rock which is called sed sedimentary rocks. And if, if you want to break the rock, you will see that it is uh, segments, segments of different colors of rock. Some are brown, some are very light, some are very dark, but there will be, there will be segments that are on that rock. And Jesus has told us, one day he wants to take us home in heaven where there are beautiful rocks. If you read that from Revelation chapter 21, verse 18 to verse number 20, Jesus tells us of this city which is built of precious, precious stones. I've never seen uh, uh, those stones here on earth, but I hope when we meet in heaven, we'll have a look at those, at those, at those uh, type of stones the jaspers, the emeralds, the amethysts, uh, all those types of rocks, we want to see them when we get to heaven. So today, we are going to talk about hiding in the rock, and we want to read from the book of Proverbs, chapter, 20, chapter 30, verse 24, and verse 26. Verse 24 says, There be four things that are wise. They are little, but they are exceedingly wise. There be four things that are little, but they are exceeding wise. The other thing is, the cornies are but a feeble folk, yet they build their house on rocks. Do you know what cornies are? Cornies, we call them rock rabbits. They live with their rocks. So their enemies are the eagles. You know, the flying eagles, those big, big birds that fly high up in the sky. Those are enemies to the conies or the rock rabbits. So what happens? The, 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 the eagle will scout 
and it will fly as it glides in the air, scanning the ground for some corners. When it see corners, the eagle starts to fly, to fly, fly towards the earth, uh, right where the corners are. So the corners are very, very, very clever. They know where to hide. So they build their houses on rocks. So what happens when they see the eagles that are coming? The eagles will be flying at great speed, coming to the earth, coming to the earth, coming to the earth, so that they will catch the conies and have uh, uh, their meals or their meat. But the conies are very clever. They will run and hide underneath the rocks, hide there underneath the rocks. When the eagles come, they will hit on the rocks and they will never catch the conies. This is what God wants us, you and me, to do. To hide in the rock who is Jesus Christ. So when the devil who is gliding and scanning the earth, looking for someone to devour, looking for that boy to devour, looking for that girl to devour, we should run and hide in the rock who is Jesus Christ. So when the devil comes, you will hit on the rock and you will never touch us. We are safe when we are hiding in the rock. How many of you boys and girls want to hide in the rock? Yes, I can see you want to hide in the rock, Jesus Christ. So let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you this Sabbath. We thank you because you gave us Jesus who is our hiding place. May uh, the grace of God help us to find Jesus, our hiding place, so that when Satan comes and wants to destroy us, he will not come near us because Jesus will protect us and defend us from the evil of Satan. Thank you so much for this day and thank you for the Sabbath blessings because we have prayed in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen.
Simwe mwenje we upenyu Mumafaro enyika Tio uyaze kwa muri Ndi himwi chingwa Shokore upenyu Sabbath brothers and sisters it is a privilege it is because of God's mercies it is because of the love of the Lord that he has kept us alive not because we are righteous but because he loves us not because we are sinners who deserve to repent maybe in the year 2022 but because he wants us in the year 2022 he has created us and he has planted us to be alive in 2022 for a reason and for a purpose allow us this morning to discuss under the subject i am back i am back you know many a times we are so worried when people say goodbye to us we are so worried or we are left with hearts aching when it's time to say goodbye 
kuba buhlungu nxa sisithi sala kahle kuba buhlungu kwabahambayo kuba buhlungu kwabasalayo but sometimes it has to happen we have to bid each other farewell i know most of us maybe are in pain because those we said goodbye to in 2021 hoping that we would meet in 2022 it did not happen as we wished for and as we prayed for but let me say to you it could have happened that way but praise the lord because he has spared you praise the lord because he has kept you alive for yet another year allow me to say to you my brother my sister yes yet 2021 was another year it could have been difficult for you could have been easy for some but let me say to you year 2022 you cannot survive if you don't move with the lord our sermon title this sabbath morning is that i am back i am back we are reading from the book of mark mark chapter 5 mark chapter 5 Then they came to the other side of the sea to the country of the Gennesaret. Mark chapter 5 verse 1 is introducing uh, uh, to us they which is in plural form. If you go to Mark chapter 4 verse number 35 to verse number 41, it introduces us to a savior traveling together with these disciples with the challenges that we meet in ch- chapter 4 with all the problems that they meet in chapter 4 we praise god that in chapter 5 they arrived safely and well allow me to say to you my brother my sister it could have been difficult for you in year 2021 it could have been challenging for you in year 2021 but praise the lord year 2022 is here for you now mark chapter 5 of verse 1 it introduces us to the plurality of the disciples and a savior arriving at their destination which is the country of the gadarenes allow me to say to you my brother my sister with jesus in the vessel you don't only smile but you can reach to your destination with jesus in the vessel my brother my sister it's not going only to be sweet whether sweet or sour you are assured that you are going to reach wherever you are going allow me to say to you my brother my sister you could have crossed over to 2022 by your might you could have crossed over to year 2022 some might call it luck some might call it maybe chance some might call it fortune but allow me to say it to you my brother my sister you have crossed over because of the mercies of the lord you could have perished somewhere along the sea you could have perished along the way you could have perished somewhere where you find you found yourself in but allow me to say to you my brother my sister the lord has preserved you the lord wants to give you another chance to move at least uh, in in another land to move in another place to move in another time zone to move in another place or in another world so that you can experience his mercies and so that you can prove again your loyalty to the lord So Jesus and his disciples they come to the place of the Gadarenes. But verse number 2 says when he had came out of the boat verse number 2 is introducing us to a problem because in verse 1 they all came to Gadarenes but in verse 2 the bible is now saying he had came out of the boat when when he had came out of the boat immediately they met him out of the tombs a man with unclean spirit now what is the bible now saying in verse 1 there were many but in verse 2 it's he allow me to say to you my brother my sister not everyone is with you in the happy times will be with you in the grave times 
Not everyone is happy with you when you are employed will be with you when you are no longer employed. Not everyone is with you when you are moneyed who is going to be with you when you no longer have the money. Allow me to say to you, my brother, my sister, it did not start with you. It will not start with you to be shunned by the very people that you respect and that you trust so much. Even Jesus experienced such a situation when he had reached the country of the Gadarenes, when he had reached the place of the tombs, when he had reached a, a graveyard, the disciples did not get off the boat. They waited in the boat to say, we don't have anything to do with the graves, but let's praise God. Even the master himself is willing to walk in the tombs, to walk on the tombs. He is willing uh, to travel and, and come to your grave situation. So the Lord gets off the boat and goes into the graveyard. Allow me to say to you, my brother, my sister, I don't know the grave situation that you're facing. I don't know the graveyard that you're staying in. It could be health-wise. It could be financially. It could be maybe you have applied and applied and are reapplied, but something is not coming up. It could be your grave situation, maybe your social life. You have tried relationship after relationship and things seems not to be working. You have tried marriage after marriage and things are are not coming up your way but let me say to you praise God we have a Jesus who is willing to visit your grave situation so the Lord or Jesus gets off in the graveyard where the disciples could not where his friends could not he could do it allow me to say to you my brother my sisters and sisters your connections might fail you your relatives might fail you, but Jesus will never fail you. Jesus will never fail you. So, Jesus comes out of the boat and the disciples remain in the boat. Allow me to say to you, my brother, my sister, when all other things fail you, when all or everyone shuns you, Praise God. Jesus is willing to come into your grave situation. Now, in the graveyard, the, now Jesus uh, is met there by a man uh, of the tombs, a man with unclean spirits. Just imagine a savior is meeting with the sinner and their meeting point is the graveyard. You know, sometimes as Christians, we are too smart that we don't want to go to the graveyard. Sometimes as Christians, we are too smart that we feel like it's not proper for us to reach those that are least in our communities. We find it so difficult to go for a reach out. We find it so difficult to even go and preach to the street kids. We find it so difficult sometimes to even go and preach to the poor. But let me say to you, the Savior is willing to go and visit those that are in a grave situation. You might limit him by not wanting to go. You might limit him by not using his strength. You might limit him by not inviting him to your situation. Now Jesus is in Gadarenes, Kumakua, and he is meeting with this man who is in the graveyard, who has stayed there, a man with unclean spirits. Allow me to say to you, my brother, my sister, Jesus is not only for those with the spirits that are clean. He is also concerned about those with unclean spirits. I don't know who has uh, told you, my brother, my sister, maybe during the year 2021, they've told you that you have unclean spirits. Let me say to you, let them say that to you, but remind them that a Jesus with clean spirits is also concerned about a sinner with an unclean spirit. Allow me to challenge you, my brother, my sister, a Jesus with the Holy Spirit is also willing to attend to a sinner with the evil spirit so that he can help them them on so that he can attend uh, to them. So the Bible is introducing us to a savior and a sinner meeting in the graveyard. Jesus does not want to wait for you to come out of your situation so that he can attend to you. He wants to come to you in that very situation and take you off that situation. So he meets with this man. The verse 3 would say, uh, this man had his dwellings amongst the tombs. He stayed in the tombs. I don't know, my brother, my sister, where you are staying. I don't know, my brother, my sister, 
what has become so normal for you, which started as something that was not normal. I don't know, my brother, my sister, what challenges you're facing in life, maybe you've faced them for too long and you've called them your situation. You've said you've taken them to be personal for you. You've taken them to be only meant for you. But let me say to you, my brother, my sister, in that situation, the Lord is coming for you. The Lord is coming for you. So this man is dwelling amongst the tomb. We can safely say this man had a grave mentality. There are some people, there are some people, you even wonder, they want to stay where people are. They always want to be alone. Maybe that's what they call splendid isolation. They don't want to relate. They don't want friends. They don't want relatives close by. They are always idle. They are always by themselves. But let me say to you, my brother, my sister, sometimes it is not good. Maybe you are carrying a grave mentality. Invite the Lord to come to you and attend to you. Yes. Abangan wakwa benzi. Oagwa lala labo. Vagu chia umangneva neva. But let me introduce you to a savior who is willing to take you off the grave situation, the grave mentality, who is willing to give you a brand new start. This man at his dwelling place amongst the tombs. And verse 3 would go on to say, No one could bind him, not even with chains. This implies that sometimes they tried to bind him, but they could not. Sometimes they tried to force him to be good, but they failed. At least they tried, but they failed. But let me say to you, my brother, my sister, we could be having somebody in our midst who is in a challenging situation. People have tried to help you, but they have failed. They have tried to show you the rightful path. And maybe because of the grave mentality, you have stayed too long in the tombs. You have seen them as senseless people. Yes, somebody out there. You have stayed too long in your sin. And such that when people rebuke you, you think they are mad. Yes, you have glorified a certain behavior or a certain sin. And you have nurtured it. Now you can't even see how wrong it is. Even when we try to help you, no one is able to bind you. That could be your grave situation. That could be the graveyard that you're staying in. The church body has tried and they have failed. Your parents have tried. The elders have tried. The pastors have tried. Time and again, they are failing to solve the situation because you have been staying in the graveyard for long and you think that's normal. But let me say to you, my brother, my sister, the grave mentality is never normal. Allow people to help you. Now, verse number four, because he had often been bound with shekels and chains. And the chains had been pulled apart by him. Now the Bible is taking it more personal. It says they tried to bind him, but he pulled the chains. He broke the chains. I don't know how many services you have attended, but you have remained the same. I don't know how many youth camps you have gone to. I don't know how many efforts you have attended. I don't know how many care meetings you have attended. I don't know how many virtual sermons you have listened to or you have watched to. I don't know, my brother, my sister, the challenges that you have faced. I don't know the, the, the church programs that you have watched. I don't know the, the, the church songs that you have listened to. But every time you break the chains, Allow me to say to you, my brother, my sister, life is not life until you learn that other people can help you. So this man, whenever they tried to help him, he broke the chains. Allow me to say to you, my brother, my sister, don't break the chains. We want to help you. We want to help ourselves to be better people so that we can be counted amongst the living, so that we can also go to that city where there will be no more pain, that city where there will be no more tears. 
Allow me to say to you, my brother, my sister, let them bind you and help you rather than to be that person who always say they cannot do anything. I know uh, there are people, there are some people that we have there. They will tell you that mini church board I saw in Zelutu. Minawa fundi spenu, lenda bazazo, lago la minyazazi. So our source is in Zelutu. But the Yegela Nguchele Mklobo Amo Tandegayo. The Bible is saying to you this morning, if this man was in the tombs and no man could bind him, not even with the chains, allow me to say to you, my brother, my sister, there is a man who is willing to transform and change you. There is a man who is willing to help you to be a better somebody. There is a man who is willing to take you or to remove you from the graveyard. Listen, my brother, my sister, it's not being a hero if your sins are not corrected. It's not being a hero if the church board cannot deal with you. It's not being a hero if the newly elected elders cannot assist you. Instead, you are carrying around the grave mentality. The grave mentality. Now the Bible goes on to say, and the shakes and the shackles broken in pieces, neither could anyone take him. Verse number five. And always night and day, you are in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out. Not only was this man breaking the chains, not only was this, this man not dressed, not only was this man somebody who lived a, a lonely life, but he was always crying out. In the tombs and in the mountains, he was always crying. There are some people who are like this man. They are always complaining time and again. Yet 2021, from the beginning to the end, they were always complaining. Good things happen to them, they are complaining. Bad things happen to them, they are complaining. Nothing happens to them, they are complaining. They are always crying. They have no time to appreciate certain things. Because they have the grave mentality. They're just like this man. They're always crying out. A relative reaches out to them. They complain. A churchmate reaches out to them. They complain. A fellow workmate tries to help them. They even complain about that. Why is it so? Because they have the grave mentality. So this man was always crying. Allow me to say to you, my brother, my sister... Sometimes you need to appreciate certain things. Praise God for year 2022. You need to start appreciating. Not to be like Legion, always crying out, always complaining. Elder so and so is elected, you complain. Elder so and so is removed, you complain. What is it that you want? What kind of life that you want? What things do you need in your life? Because whatsoever you have, you are complaining. When you were single, you were complaining. Now that you're married, you are complaining again. And maybe the Lord just decides to leave you a widow. And when you become a widow, you complain again. So this was the situation of this man. He was in the tombs, always crying out and cutting himself with stones. He did not stop by crying out. He was always cutting himself with stones. Allow me to say to you, my brother, my sister, sometimes we have a challenge of always cutting ourselves. We cut ourselves from our families. There are people when they became Christians, they cut themselves from their families. We cut ourselves from things that are meant for us to benefit. We always cut ourselves from the churches that are meant to develop us. We always cut ourselves from the people who are carrying our breakthroughs. We always cut ourselves from the situations that could have molded us to be better people. This was the man always cutting himself. Allow me to say to you, my brother, my sister, sometimes you don't need to cut yourself. Stay connected. Stay in line. Zamuzo sit in a church in Angsabui. Wagwenzen, I velang Sabui. They are cutting themselves out. 
But are you doing it for others? Or you are doing it for the Lord? Are you doing it to, 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 to hate others? Instead, when you are thinking you are uh, you are doing it to yourself. It's you who is going to carry the scars. It's you who is going to carry the pain. It's you who is going to always have a challenge. But let me say to you, my brother, my sister, sometimes you need to allow people to help you and remove you from the grave mentality. Verse number six would say, when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him. Praise God, this man, inasmuch as in, he was in his situation, he saw the Lord and he ran to him. He saw the Lord and he ran to the, to the man that he knew the man would help him. Allow me to say to you, my brother, my sister, when there is no man, Jesus is the man. When there is no man to help you, Jesus is the man. When there is no man... To marry you, Jesus is the man. When there is no man to preach to you, Jesus is the man. When there is no man to sustain you, Jesus is the man. So when this man saw Jesus, he ran and worshipped him. Allow me to say it to you, my brother, my sister. I don't know what kind of sin that is stopping you from running to the Lord. This man had a serious situation. He was even worse than all of us. But when he saw the Lord, he ran to the Lord and worshipped him. Don't worry about that. Run to the Lord. So this man ran to the Lord, and when he saw the Lord, he was happy. At least somebody had come to rescue him. Remember, he was staying in the graveyards. So which means there was nobody else with him. He was by himself. The only person who was alive in the graveyard was this man. And now he had seen a Savior who was willing to come to him. And he said, praise God, at least now the Savior is here for me. And I know he's not going to leave me here. So he ran and worshipped the Lord. And the Lord, the Bible will tell us that the Lord attended to this man. And the man was delivered. Verse number 18, he says, And when he got into the boat, he who, had demon possessed, who was demon possessed, begged him that he might be with him. Now when Jesus had come to this man, he attended to his situation healed this man and after healing this man and after taking him off of this place the man said unto the lord lord why don't you take me with me why don't you take you with me why don't you go with me wherever you are going why don't you go with me i was alone here and you can't expect me to go back to the people that left me to be alone you can't expect me lord to be with the same people that cut me off. You can't expect me, Lord, to go back to the same family that rejected me. You can't expect me, Lord, to go to the, to, to the same friends that rejected me and left me among my men. Lord, please go with me. And then the Lord said, no, 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 no. I'm not going with you. Go back to your family. Go back to your relatives and show them what the Lord has done for you. We said, I am back. The man could have stayed for a longer time in the graveyard. But when he met the Lord, he went back. Allow me to say to you, my brother, my sister, the year 2022, you are back. The Lord has kept you alive for better. The Lord has kept you alive so that you can change certain characteristics, so that maybe you can remove the grave mentality in you, so that maybe and you can be a better somebody. This man, we had been in the tombs for I don't know, I don't know how many years, but when the Lord had attended to this man, he went back home and home. And guess what? He did not only go back home, he went to his family. He went to his people and preached to them. What was his sermon? You remember me? I stayed in the graveyard. I met with the Lord. He changed me and now I'm a better man. Is there anybody who wants this savior? And guess what? 
10 cities were converted because the man was back. Allow me to say, my brother, my sister, in the year 2021, you could have had a repetition of being a liar. This is year 2022. Be back telling the truth. In the year 2021, you could have been somebody who was always complaining. Allow me to say to you, my brother, my sister, year 2022, be back and start appreciating. In the year 2021, you could have been a heartbreaker. In the year 2022, be a heart mender. In the year 2021, my brother, my sister, you could have somebody who have been disappointing, but let me say to you, in the year 2022, be somebody who will be appointing. In the year 2021, you have been through a lot, but allow me to say to you, my brother, my sister, in the year 2022, bring a lot. Don't forget to be back. Yes, year 2021, Yahoo we sell a pants, but Vuga and daughter Vuga. We need to move forward. You need to take yourself up. You need to gear yourself and be a better somebody. You need to be back. The Lord did not take him away. Instead, he said, go back to your people. The Lord did not take you. You did not die in the year 2021. He wanted you to be back in the year 2022 so that people can see what the Lord can do for his people. I don't know what you're struggling with, my brother, my sister. But don't forget to be back. I don't know the situation that you have been through. But let me say to you, my brother, my sister, this is your year to be back. Be back. I am back. You should be back. All of us should be back. And show the people and show the world what the Lord has done for us. I want to pray with somebody. we saying, Pastor, I want to be back. Just like Legion. Maybe I've stayed too long in the graveyard. But I want to be back. Year 2022, people should see me alive. See me a better Christian. See me a better brother. See me a better father. See me a better mother. See me a better sister. See me a better person. If you are there, we are praying. Our Father art in heaven, we thank you so much for bringing us back in the year 2022. Father, help us and make us better people. We are back, my Father. You have allowed us to be back. Use us as you wish. Make us better people. Make us great people. Wherever we walk, people should feel that we are back. Whatever we say, people should hear the words of people that are back. How we dress, people should see people that are back. And not only back, but people that have been to the Lord and are back from the Lord. Father, we ask of you to come to us and be with us for this year. If we have never been better people, make us better people. Make us good individuals. Make us good Christians. Challenge and change us for your glory so that people may see you through us. Be with us today and forevermore. Amen. May the good Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Happy New Year.